I've often heard you say, the first concussion, you need to recover from that and make sure you don't get another one in that initial phase when you are recovering. Now, if you do get another concussion in that initial period where you are recovering from the ATP down regulation, if you do get a concussion then and you're not recovered, how long does it then take for you to recover that ATP down regulation? Um, so we have limited data on this. So I was saying before this, most of the studies are from this Italian group that's used magnetic resonance spectroscopy. They show ATP or N, what's called NAA, which is a correlative ATP, NAA re uh, restoring at about day 30. Um, but they, again, they only measure at 20, 21 days and it's not quite back up to normal. And then they measure again at 30 and it's back up. So somewhere in that range of between 21 and 30 days, they're back up to normal. And like I said, some studies have shown as much as 45 days. There's the only thing we have so far is a case series of six people in that particular study that didn't want to wait because the way that was done, it was, it was done in athletes and they made them wait until day 30 before going back and participating back in sport. Well, they had six people that didn't wait till the full day 30. They wanted to go back and play their sport earlier and they ended up getting subsequent concussions. And so what you can see, and obviously it's a very small sample. There's only six people. There's no controls. I mean, it's a hard thing to control for anyway, but you have six people, they've got subsequent concussions, and their NAA didn't normalize until between day 90 and day 120. And it seemed that the closer the two concussion injuries were to each other, the longer it took for not only their symptoms to go away after. So after the first concussion, the average symptoms, uh, the average symptom duration was about three days. And then the recovery time from an NAA position was between that 21 and 30 days right now after the second concussion the, the, the symptoms would last as long as 50 to 60 days and then so not only that you're symptomatic for now two months and the naa normalization which is if you want to think of that in atp recovery and kind of that vulnerability period it was was anywhere from 90 to 120 days so you're talking three to four weeks on the first concussion and you're talking three to four months you know, on the second one. So, yeah. so in theory, if someone had their first concussion, they've never had one before in theory, they should have at least three to four weeks off before they get back to sport. Mm -hmm. Would you say that? Or is yep. it, it's more nuanced than that with making sure that they, a get through the three to four weeks, but B, they don't have any you know, persistent symptoms going forward. Yeah, I think there's a combination of that. I mean, um, it's, it's tough because people always ask this question and the question is, well, why don't we just tell all athletes that if you get concussed, you're out for a month. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that we already have a problem with reporting. We know that concussions are underreported. We know that 50% of athletes don't report when they get a concussion. And that's because they're afraid they might miss a week right? The current kind of thought of most athletes is, oh, you get a conky, you're out for a week. Okay. But, and we still 50% are underreported. Now, if we just blanket statement made the rule that anytime you get a concussion, you're out for a month, a, the NFL would have a very hard time succeeding as would a lot of professional sports, because you'd have half your roster sitting on the sidelines for the bulk of the season. And B, I think you'd end up with a lot more underreporting. So it's better. And I don't know, like, I'm hoping that this is all healthcare professionals listening to this. And <laughs> because, because the way that, um, you know, like, I think from a safety perspective, it's better to have athletes have the mindset that, oh, I'll be better when I'm better. And I'm going to report this. And the sooner I do, the better, because we actually have a lot of evidence to show that when, if somebody continues to play with a concussion, they end up creating worse problems, right? You have increased glutamate release. You have increased body temperature. You have increased calcium uptake. You have increased uh, mitochondrial dysregulation. You create all sorts of problems by continuing to play with your concussion. So the sooner you report it, the better. So anything we can do to encourage athletes to do that, I think the better. Now, the way that our our clinics 
um, you know, kind of talk to people about this is, you know, some people might be better sooner than others, but really in our mind, we're trying to do whatever we can to kind of get them to that point of, you know, three to four weeks on a timeline. And we also want to see full function. We're not necessarily going to come out and say that to the athlete that, Hey, you're going to be out for at least, you know, three to four weeks. We would rather say, well, you know, we'll see how long it takes. Everybody's different. You know, you'll be better when you bet when you're better. And uh, we'll just take it one day at a time because then it's, it's, you know, a, if I just were to come out with my patient comes and sits down, I say, it's going to be three to four weeks. They're going to go find the random GP that doesn't understand anything about concussion. And they're going to say, sign my letter. Cause I have a big, you know, tournament or big game this weekend. Uh, and that GP is probably going to sign off because they just don't have the education for the most part to realize that that's a really bad move. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very complicated question. So from a healthcare standpoint, I'm trying to get, you know, our clinics just in the mindset of like, okay, this is gonna be three to four weeks. So don't rush your follow-up visits, you know, <laughs> don't try to get somebody in every single day because all of a sudden they've passed through stages and you're in a position where you have to clear somebody and it's only been 10 days. We know that's bad. We know that that's putting them in at risk for another one. That's going to be twice as bad. That's going to take them four times as long to recover. So instead of that, it's okay. We're going to tell them they're going to be better when they're better. But in the meantime, as we're working with them, we're actually you know, just taking our time and going through the stages, right? Just kind of separating them a little bit by little bit so that we can get to that, you know, three to four week mark. So that when we're actually making a return decision, we feel pretty comfortable in making that decision, especially if the person has full function, right? Their balance is back to normal reaction times, back to normal ocular motor processing, all that stuff is bang on. And we know that kind of the metabolic side is on side with what, you know, the research says, all right, now, you know, we're making a better decision for that athlete, right? Yeah, they may, hate, they, they may hate it in the in the short term, but it ultimately is going to prolong their career, you know, improve their quality of life after sport, you know, do all sorts of benefits. But in the moment, you know, the the young, you know, rugby player just wants to play. They, you know, so it's a it's a hard thing. Yeah, exactly. It does sound like to me, and I've heard you talk about this a lot. If you get one concussion, make sure you recover from that first concussion. Mm -hmm. that's the big thing because mm -hmm. you don't want subsequent concussions in that initial period while you are recovering. And that was one of my downfalls. You know, when I was 17, I had one, had a week out because that was just what everyone did back then. and was just like, have a week out and you'll be fine. Came back the following week and then had another concussion mm -hmm. and then had to have a month out. But after listening to this and also doing a lot of research myself under sort of your guidance with your podcast and everything, sounds like to me even in that four week period after the second concussion i was still nowhere near recovered and then subsequently three months later i had another concussion and mm -hmm. i was definitely not recovered from that after mm -hmm. the second concussion so it makes sense that i had to retire in the end and i'm glad that i did when i did um, i think that that you know one of the things that you know i have a couple sayings that i always say i always say we don't have a concussion problem we have a concussion management problem. Yes. Well done. Yeah. Right? We are, we are not, it's not necessarily having a concussion concussion, um, you know, is a treatable injury. It is a recoverable injury. Um, people that have persistent symptoms get really pissed off when I say this, but there <laughs> are, tr there are treatments for persistent concussion symptoms. There are treatments for concussion. The sooner you get good quality treatment, the better we know this, we know that the number one correlate of recovery time is how quickly you're in to see somebody with specialized training and concussion mm. and concussion rehab. So we know there's things you can do to, to improve the outcomes for people getting concussions. That's not necessarily the issue. That's not the thing I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the second and third concussions when they're in that short period of time together, right? Because you have people in professional sports that are having to retire early because of concussions. Well, if we had managed those right from the start, like yeah. when the, thir when the 13 year old gets their first concussion, if we were to say, okay, this is, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to make sure that everything's good before we send you back 90, listen to this stat, 90% of concussions that are not 90 percent of players that have two concussions within the same season, get that second concussion within 10 days of the first. Wow. Right? So it just tells well, you how vulnerable what sports is that from? Uh, I believe that's football. I'd have to look back at it. I have the, the slide somewhere, but yeah, that was, that was the stat. 90% of players that get concussed within the same season 
hap it happens within 10 days of one another. So a, <laughs> If that was our program, they wouldn't be on the field. They wouldn't even have that opportunity. Mm. Uh, but it just shows you how how vulnerable and susceptible you are in that recovery period. Now, not only that, if you think what I told you before, that NAA normalization is now 90 to 120 days. So that's the actual recovery time point now, 90 to 120 days. So three to four months. The symptoms of that second concussion only lasted between 50 and 60 days. So if the person's relying on, oh, I'm asymptomatic, which a lot of general practitioners do, which a lot of athletes do, you know, wait till your symptoms go away. Symptoms don't mean shit. It doesn't mean anything, your symptoms. What you want to find out is when your function returns, because these people are still going to have slowed reaction time altered. This is why you need to kind of have testing involved in this. But think about that. If you're relying on symptoms, 50 to 60 days, your symptoms go away. You're going to think, man, I've already been out for two months. I'm going back. Yeah. You still have another two months where you're still within that vulnerable window of potentially getting a second concussion, right? And if, even if you think about first concussions, right? I'm talking three to four weeks before NAA normalization, but symptoms typically go away in the first seven to 10 days. So if you're relying on symptoms after a week, you're thinking you're good, but you still got three weeks of potential devastation happening after that. You know what I mean? So it just, it just comes down to um, healthcare practitioners not having a lot of, you know, education on this topic and they're making decisions that they really don't know what the implications of those decisions are. Um, and that's kind of the, the thing.